This morning we're starting a series. Uh, at the current time, I've got it planned out for six weeks. Uh, Y'all know how that goes. Sometimes things happen and we go a little longer. Sometimes we don't make it quite that far. But uh, we're starting a series uh, that I'm hoping, like I said, for six weeks, talking about spiritual gifts. There's a lot that Scripture has to say about spiritual gifts. If you look in your bulletin this morning, by the way, I'm not a guest speaker for the Gideons. Uh, we forgot to change that this morning, which, uh, you know, sometimes when you're perforating stuff, you just in the habit of seeing something, so that's what you see. Uh, but this morning we're going to talk about who, when, how, and what when it comes to spiritual gifts. Scripture gives us a lot of information on spiritual gifts. But we're going to look this morning at when they're given, how they're given, what they're used for, why they're important, where they should be used, and how they were used in the early church. We're also going to look throughout the series as the need for certain gifts in the church today. We're going to wrap up the series with that as a matter of fact. We're also going to, uh, to look at the meaning of each gift as is mentioned in Scripture. Now, towards the end of the series, I have a spiritual gift inventory or questionnaire uh, that I'm going to have ready for everybody to fill out. Now, this spiritual gift inventory, this questionnaire, was developed by Ray Graham. And you may recognize that name because he was former uh, academic dean at Mid-South Christian College. Uh, I passed away a few years ago. Several years ago, I attended a weekend seminar where he presented a wonderful workshop on learning spiritual gifts, developing our gifts, using our gifts. So this was a two-day seminar, and I learned more in the close to 16 hours that we spent in a classroom with him, actually it's cafeteria, uh, with him learning about gifts, and I hope to be able to give you much of that information throughout the series. Um, now, I've taken several different questionnaires uh, that's supposed to help us to determine our spiritual gifts. Um, I've taken them out of books. I've taken them just going down to the local Bible bookstore and, and buying one. I've taken them uh, several churches that we've attended throughout the years. And there's several things that I've learned throughout the process. First, is that our gifts can change as we grow in our relationship with Christ. Second, as we develop our gifts, we may discover that we have natural abilities that help us as we use our gifts. Throughout this series, I want to challenge you to discover your gifts if you haven't, to use your gifts if you're not, and to develop and grow your spiritual gifts. An unknown author wrote, at various times in history, God employed supernatural signs and miracles to accompany the message being given by his messengers. The purpose of these miracles was twofold, to draw special attention to the message, for it was, in most, most cases, new, or stronger than the one given before, and to authenticate the speaker. The miracles and special powers given to men to officiate them were not the focus of the message. They were secondary. Simply intended to draw attention to the spoken words and to validate the speaker by God's chosen representative. Now that explains a lot of what we read as how the gifts are used in the New Testament. So let's look this morning starting with who? Who has spiritual gifts? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 says, But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned The grace that Paul is talking about right here is spiritual gifts. Each and every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ has at least one gift. 
God doesn't look to anybody, overlook anybody. Each believer is important to the body of Christ. And since every believer is different, with a different personality, there are a lot of different gifts. There's a lot of different work to be done within the church. And it takes every single one of us to do it. So therefore, every single one of us has at least one spiritual gift. Often we'll find out that we have more than one. Often we'll find out that each gift that we have works hand in hand with another gift that we have. The first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Manifestation of the Spirit, spiritual gifts. Every Christian has a manifestation of the Spirit. Most Christians, as I mentioned, especially in smaller churches, have multiple gifts. Just because we're a small church doesn't mean we don't have to do the same amount of work the bigger churches do. Because God knows that, He gives us multiple gifts. Well, when are the spiritual gifts given? When do we get these wonderful blessings that God gives us? Well, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, we read, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. As we'll look a little bit closer in a moment, we're given our gifts by the Holy Spirit. This is just one of the many responsibilities of the Holy Spirit. But when we hear the gospel of Christ, we have two choices. Believe it and accept it, or don't believe it and reject it. When we believe it and accept it, we are promised the Holy Spirit, which will mark us with God's seal, giving us our salvation. So that leads to the next question. How do we get the Holy Spirit? Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter said that we begin by repenting, then we're baptized, and baptism, our sins are forgiven, and we're given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Since we receive the Holy Spirit at baptism, we also receive our spiritual gifts at baptism. But I need you to understand that just because we're given our spiritual gifts at baptism, it is our responsibility to learn what gifts we have and to develop them, and then to use them. God will give them, give them to us, but He won't make us use them. <coughs> he expects us to use them, but He's not going to force us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, it says, For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Since we're all baptized into Christ, we all become part of the body of Christ. In order for the body of Christ to function proper, properly, spiritual gifts are given to each of us. By the same Holy Spirit. Now, I can't remember if it's next week or the week after, but we're going to get into a little bit more of how the body of Christ works together. But just to give you a little uh, look at that, we need to understand, look at the human body. If one part stops working correctly, the rest of your body feels it. Same goes with our spiritual gifts. If one part of the body, one believer stops using their gifts, we all feel it. We all suffer. This church suffers somehow. So once we're given the Holy Spirit, how does the Holy Spirit work in giving us our gifts? 
In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive power from God. And it's through this power that the Holy Spirit gives us our spiritual gifts. It's through this power that we can develop and use our gifts. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that allows us to share the gospel of Christ, no matter what our gifts are. So understand, sharing the gospel of Christ, being a witness for Jesus Christ, is not a spiritual gift. It is a command given to all of us. It's not a choice. It's not an option. It's a command. It's given to every Christian. But God will give us different ways of expressing and sharing the gospel through our spiritual gifts. And even before any spiritual gifts were given to the church, the Holy Spirit empowered the apostles and the other disciples as they prepared to share the gospel. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples. And they began to use His power to spread the gospel throughout the entire land. And eventually, most of the world. The giving of power is another of the responsibilities of the Holy Spirit. There are several others that help us to learn, develop, and use our spiritual gifts found in Scripture that we need to look at. In John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, we read, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears and will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to Me by taking from what is mine and making it known. To you. And here the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will guide us in truth and will help us guide us to discover, to develop, and use our spiritual gifts. God doesn't just give them to us, tell us to figure it out on our own. He allows the Holy Spirit to work in us. And the work of the Holy Spirit will bring glory to God by taking God's gifts that He gives to us by helping us to use them. When we use our spiritual gifts, we use them for the glory of God. And the Holy Spirit will help us to do that. Well, how does the Holy Spirit determine which gift each person is given? In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, it says, God also testified by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. Well, the spiritual gifts are given according to God's will. Since the Holy Spirit is God's worker here on earth, He has to obey God's will. Therefore, when God says we're to have this gift, the Holy Spirit makes sure we're given that gift. God has something specific that He wants for every believer to accomplish. Every believer, He has something specific for each of us to do. And when I say specific, your job is different than mine. Your job is different than the person sitting next to you, the person sitting behind you or in front of you. And in order for these things to be done, we need special talents, which the Bible refers to as spiritual gifts that we can use to fulfill God's will in our lives. This is how God empowers us to do what He wants us to do. God determines what we're to do. He determines what we need to do it. And then He has the Holy Spirit give them to us. He has the Holy Spirit tell us what He wants us to do and then distribute the necessary gifts for us to do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6, it says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. 
There are different kinds of working. But the same God works all of them in all men. When you read the chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, it gives us a lot of information about spiritual gifts. And in this scripture, we see that there are different gifts. Why are there different gifts? Because there are different kinds of service, and there's different kinds of works. But they're all given by the same Holy Spirit, the same Lord Jesus Christ, and the same God, the Father in Heaven. The three members of the Holy Trinity work together to determine who gets what gift and how those gifts are used. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 says, All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. Just as God determines. The Holy Spirit will go to work in our lives. Will tell us what we're to do. The Spirit will read our heart, our thoughts. He knows our desires and our abilities. He's at work in every believer. He understands how we work. He understands our natural talents and abilities. And he'll help God determine which gift we're to be given. Now I want to point out something. Just the few scriptures that we've read. Spiritual gifts have been identified as grace, manifestations of the Spirit, power, truth, gifts, service, and works. <coughs> so while there's many different terms that can be used to describe spiritual gifts, they all mean the same thing. They all have many uses. So what's the purpose of the gifts? What does the Bible say is the purpose of the gifts? Well, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift he has received huh, to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Here again, we see spiritual gifts referred to as grace and as gifts. And we're told that we are to use our gifts to serve each other. To serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. These are gifts that are be, to be used within the church as a way of showing love to one another. Sharing God's grace. When we're faithful in using our gifts, we're administering God's grace. Well, what does this mean? This means that we can't keep our gifts to ourselves. It means if we have a gift and we know what it is, and we're sitting on it, we're not doing any good. We're not serving each other. It also means that we can't use them to further ourselves. To make ourselves look big and important. We're to use our gifts to serve one another. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, gives us another reason that we have spiritual gifts is to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ can be built up. Gifts are used to prepare us to do the work that God has given us to do. When we use our spiritual gifts, we help each other grow in our knowledge and our relationship with Jesus Christ. This helps prepare us to do God's work. It helps prepare us to do our service for Him outside of these walls. Using our spiritual gifts within the church helps prepare us to go out and share the gospel. It helps prepare us to go out and serve our community. Which again... Not an option. It's a command for each and every one of us. And as we use our spiritual gifts to serve each other, to prepare each other, we help prepare ourselves to go out and follow that command. 
when we prepare to go out there and make an impact for Christ, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in church. It's the whole purpose that we gather on a Sunday morning is to prepare to go out in the community on Monday morning. To prepare ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our lives to go out on a Monday morning into a hostile world and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. To make an impact for Jesus Christ. Another reason is given in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. It says, So be it, so it is with you. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that help build up the church. Now again, like I said, in a few weeks we're going to look at each and every specific gift listed in Scripture. But some do more to build up the church than others. Paul, in this passage, was referring specifically to speaking in tongues, which, again, we'll go over in depth in a few weeks. But this is one gift that was not building up the church as much as it was heard in the church at this time. The Corinthian people wanted this gift because it seemed like it was the best gift. But Paul tells us that we should focus on the gifts that build up the church. We should be eager for the gifts that help us to serve each other and to prepare each other for service outside the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26 says, what, what then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. At this point in his letter to the Corinthian church, Paul laid out that our worship needs to be organized and purposeful. Every part of our worship service has a purpose of building up the church. If it's something that's not helping us to prepare for service, for building up the church, both in spiritual growth and in numerical growth, it doesn't belong in our worship service. If it's causing conflict, if it's causing conflict, it's not building up the church. Maybe we need to examine it and find out what we can do in its place. If it's taking up too much time, maybe we need to examine it. Spiritual gifts are given so that our worship services will be uplifting, encouraging, healing, and will prepare us in our hearts for service. Our gifts aren't given for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. God doesn't want us to just sit on our gifts. And if we don't use our gifts, or we use them in a way that doesn't build up the church, we're abusing them, and we're corrupting our worship. We don't need to allow that to happen. We need to use our spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are given to all of us, to every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're distributed by the Holy Spirit, which we receive when we believe and we're baptized. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together to decide which gifts were given according to His grace, according to His will, according to His purpose in our lives. In the scriptures that we've looked at today, we've seen the spiritual gifts are referred to as grace, manifestations of the Spirit, power, truth, gifts of the Holy Spirit, service, works. James calls them deeds, we're to use our gifts. We're not to keep them to ourselves. We're not to use them in a way that builds ourselves up. Spiritual gifts are to be used to serve each other. To prepare each other 
to do God's work. For building up and strengthening the church. I know we've covered a lot of scripture today. Many of you are probably thinking, this is just information overload. That's one reason I give you an outline in your bulletin. You know, you can go home and, and study this stuff for yourself. As we continue the service, this series, I want to encourage you to discover your gifts if you've not yet done so. I also want to encourage you to develop and grow your gift if you've not yet done so. And even once you've discovered it and you've learned it, you can still make it grow. I want to encourage you to continue to use your gifts if you are. If you've stopped using your gifts, I want to encourage you to begin using your gift again. And as we'll look at in a couple weeks, the reason for that is, is because if you're not using your gift in the church to serve one another, if you stop using whatever gift it is, whether it's musical, whether it's teaching, whether it's children, whatever your gift is, if you're not using it, something's not getting done. I encourage you to start using your gift if you've stopped. And I've read the entire Bible multiple times. And in all of my study of the Bible, I have not found where God says that we are to stop using our gifts. I haven't found a time limit, an age limit on our gifts. They might change. We might discover that Maybe we don't have this gift anymore, but God has moved us into this part of service. And that's okay. But if we're not using our gifts, something is not getting done. Could you imagine? I'll just give you a few examples real quick. Prepare us for the next couple of weeks. Could you imagine <coughs> we showed up on Sunday morning for worship and we didn't have Sherry to play the piano? Or could you imagine showing up at 10 o'clock for Sunday school and there were no teachers? Or imagine showing up on Sunday morning and the grass being a foot tall. Folks, somebody has a gift of service that calls for them to mow the grass. That's why it's not a foot tall. Could you imagine showing up on Sunday morning and flipping the light switch? No electricity. No water. Somebody's been given a gift of administration to be able to make sure that all the bills were paid on time. And we're not sitting here praising in the dark. Whatever the gift that you've been given is, if you're not using it, somebody in this room is not being served. Somebody's not being prepared to do the work that God has called them to do. So the whole purpose of this series is to help everybody discover their gifts if they have it, or to encourage everybody to get to work. So as we go throughout this series, I want you to keep these things in the forefront of your mind. What has God called me to do? What has He given me the ability to do? Am I doing it? Do I need to do it more? What's not being done that I'm supposed to do?